and um, I see that also this ecotourist destination could be a very good, uh, very good label for for your route because the the, the landscape is also beautiful. So um, well, good luck for the implementation also. So thank you very much, Mihai, and to Sibiu region. I will give the floor um, now to um, the, um, to Poland. <laughs> to uh, Lower Silesian uh, region to present the route implementation plan on the topic of route of uh, castle and palaces uh, route and I give the floor to Arkadius Dolega. Uh, good on. afternoon to everybody. I would like to present the results of our work in the CERTAS project. Why we choose uh, this subject, castles and pas palaces? Maybe just because we've got uh, the um, um, the largest number of them from all region of Poland. They represent basically uh, all architect architectural styles in a huge variety and value. Among these facilities are those belonging to the imperial family and designed by the greatest architect architects. Uh, in these castles and palaces, many stories were uh, taken place by which we could tell story of Europe. But we've got these palaces. Uh, if uh, tourists are interested in, we can uh, go back to our uh, tourism research uh, prepared in 2010. As you will see, uh, the, uh, the palaces and castles were the uh, main, uh, main attraction they are looking for uh, by tourists. Uh, from this, uh, from this, um, from this uh, 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 research, we can also uh, estimate a model of, uh, of uh, tourists. For example, uh, they are, uh, they are <coughs> journey with family, uh, with friends, uh, they uh, go by the car or by the railway, um, they are uh, going with family and uh, with friends, so on the basis of this uh, research, uh, we, can, uh, we can produce some packages, some uh, variants of, of, uh, of uh, the route for, for, for these people. Uh, the main theme of trail are the castles and palaces of historical Silesia, and historical Silesia is more than uh, only Lower Silesia. There's also Upper Silesia, uh, Opolskie region, uh, part of the Kingdom of, of Bohemia. It was in, in very, uh, very uh, different hands uh, in the history. So this is the historic uh, Silesia, Schlesian. The uh, theme of the trail is uh, so generally worded that may be interested uh, in other cross-border international group because um, uh, cross-border uh, regions uh, are the regions where the uh, castles and palaces were uh, built uh, more than in other regions. Uh, for uh, our lobbying, uh, we are uh, now regions who are interested in uh, in the project. Uh, this is all. This also is uh, Polskie, Śląskie uh, on the Polish side, Saxony on the German side, uh, Liberecki, Krelowo Hradecki, Pardubicki, Omołcki, Kraj. And um, the territory of the project in the second stage, including uh, Czech side, in the frame of the flag project of. Uh, European cross-border cooperation. We've got uh, 12 partners uh, and now in these days we are submitting application uh, to, uh, to this project. This will, it will be a flag project so uh, it uh, couldn't be uh, estimated by, uh, by a normal procedure. Uh, in the first stage uh, we've got um, uh, 12 partners uh, in this project. Basic information about them uh, we present uh, in the table below. And um, it's uh, the crucial way is uh, legal form because uh, it, uh, from, from this legal form uh, it depends on needs of, of, of these partners. Uh, majority of them are uh, in the public hands but there is some in, uh, also in uh, company hands. Uh, here you have um, um, uh, here you have uh, a plan of uh, of these uh, attractions, these twelve uh, these twelve castles and pal palaces. Uh, it's all uh, in uh, Lower Silesia. 
region, in all uh, Lower Silesia region. As you will see, uh, they have uh, uh, a very different architecture, uh, very, dif very different styles, but uh, it's uh, the most known in, in my region. Some slides with our uh, stakeholders. Uh, partners in the project are connected with informal network now uh, uh, on the basis of uh, general agreement in which uh, DOT has organized, uh, uh, committed to many activities, including uh, in RIP also. Uh, for example, it will be a system of visual, of visual identity, a uh, plan of signposting system uh, on the regional roads and highways, a website, and so on. Uh, as you will see, this is uh, uh, our round table. It's really round. Um, the signing uh, will be according to the vision uh, presented below. We've, we, uh, we have some segments, uh, six segments of tourists. For, uh, for, uh, for them, there will be uh, other packages uh, proposed. Uh, first one is uh, organized uh, motorized and business. Second one is organized motorized and school. Uh, third one motorized individual, uh, motorized uh, in families. And uh, fourth, fifth bike individual and bike with a family. Uh, we uh, propose um, uh, two, uh, two routes, uh, one route but uh, uh, small one around the Wroclaw, uh, it uh, and uh, the big one in all the region. The small one uh, here you have a car short route. Uh, there will be uh, starting in the Royal Palace in Wroclaw and going through uh, some points around the Wroclaw. Wroclaw will be uh, capital of uh, culture in 2016, and this package should. Uh, should extend uh, extend uh, uh, for tourists uh, extend uh, uh, product of Wroclaw. Uh, here you have uh, a, a bicycle short route. It's a one day uh, route for 50, 50 kilometers. And uh, the part of this route here it's uh, going through the uh, European Eurovelo uh, number nine, it's an uh, uh, amber route, um, and uh, in Wroclaw uh, uh, there was uh, uh, the big uh, treasure uh, was found, the, the biggest treasure uh, of amber in the history of the world. It was uh, uh, 1,500 kilograms of amber. So it was a very, very uh, important uh, important city on, on, on uh, Amber Route. Uh, here you have also uh, can see a bicycle route, a uh, car route uh, in uh, approximately it takes a three day route around uh, Lower Silesia. Uh, a bicycle route uh, will, uh, will, is, will be signed uh, on the basis of strategy of uh, bike tourism in Lower Silesia. Uh, this uh, this main uh, in, in this main direction, we plan also um, uh, technical documentation on the route. It means conception and localization of small infrastructure on the route, including, f for example, as you will see. Um, also, we plan, uh, of course, um, signing by the car uh, car signs. Um, here you have uh, <coughs> here you have a uh, Cistercian route that we uh, five years ago uh, signing on, on in my region and and of course uh, signposting on the basis of uh, Eurovelo Cycle f f Federation. Um, here you have a main goal um, and uh, the operational goals. Uh, from these goals, uh, the three of actions uh, are um, are in our uh, rib. Uh, 
you have an action uh, to uh, every operational goal. Uh, in operational goal uh, two, uh, we uh, propose uh, some promotion of new touristic product. Um, uh, there will be a diverse uh, tools, um, website, catalogs, uh, study tours for journalists and tour operators, touristic first, historic reconstructions, and regional products uh, first, uh, touristic card, uh, loyalty program exhibitions, and also online television. And uh, these tools we also choose and uh, by uh, experience that we achieved in a certain project. Uh, and this action will be uh, founded by uh, in, in our flag project. Uh, some uh, also promotion we uh, we do uh, f with our funds. Uh, for example, it's a, a website, folder, database of uh, photos, uh, photos exhibition in some centers in Poland. Uh, this is uh, now uh, uh, our producing. This is our website. Uh, here you have uh, some kind of uh, postcard with a uh, coin. Uh, uh, in every castle there will be uh, other coins because of their history. Um, here you have uh, uh, some uh, actions uh, uh, concerning with development of networking product in the uh, region. Um, uh, the third one, operational goal and three of actions. Uh, if we are talking about the funding, uh, there will be activities in uh, goal two and three that will be funded from the uh, from the flag project uh, in, in uh, Poland Czech uh, cross border co uh, cooperation and uh, activities, for example, in uh, uh, goal four. Uh, cooperation in networking formula and uh, support for guesters uh, we are planning in Erasmus Plus. And we are really identified with, uh, with this uh, route. As you will see on this photo, this is our general manager, and this is not a Photoshop. <laughs> uh, so uh, thank you very much for status partners. Thank you for your experience, and thank you for your solutions. Um, thank you very much. Thank you very much, Arek. Uh, so uh, you can see this is another topic on uh, on the cultural roots possibility to develop uh, roots. So um, yes, we spoke at the beginning to to, to try to find a, a theme for the castle and palaces. So I don't know how you will develop the product. I mean, I see very well the promotion and the, the places, the, the the sites, and also the possibilities. I understood that the property sometimes it's private, public. It depends. I mean, you have to to negotiate a lot. Or to, to, to sign agreements between all these places in order to create a route. So, this is um, uh, Lower Silesia Castle Route uh, video.
Thank you very much for uh, Poland and the Lower Silesian uh, region. Um, we will follow with um, a new category, which is uh, the category of um, joining already existing routes. And um, it is the case of two European cultural routes certified by the Council of Europe. So they are already European routes, and uh, we try now to do the, the opposite, to create the regional one and to, to put it into, into a, a European one. So um, I was not supposed to do this presentation, because, uh, the, but the, expert is, he, the experts couldn't come uh, to Luxembourg today. Uh, we have some people that they are stuck in Amsterdam, in Mexico, in <laughs> I don't know where, so I try to do my best to cover the whole, the whole topics. And, um, but well, we are working together now for, for, for years, so I know very well their work and uh, the, 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 the route implementation plan they, they are uh, already finishing. So uh, the idea now for a um, historic thermal towns um, route in the greater region and in Luxembourg, uh, it was to um, create this sub, uh, I mean, the sub route of this European one. And uh, we started with Luxembourg, uh, with the city of Mondorf Les Bains, which is, uh, well, the mayor was here this morning. I don't see him anymore. But uh, he was very interested to join uh, this route uh, in, uh, the, uh, the, in the greater region, but also at the European level. And he al already signed the, um, the, the agreement with this uh, European Route of Historic, Historic Thermal Towns Association. So um, I will present it uh, very briefly how we want to, to, um, to, to do this route. Um, at the European level, of course, the, 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 the starting point, it is the thermal um, heritage. And um, with the heritage history, with, with thermalism, of course, um, with the quality tourism management and uh, the certification of the Council of Europe helps a lot to create the network at the European level. Um, the, the objectives at long term are uh, very much cultural, but uh, on cultural cooperation and uh, European common history values, um, and also uh, to with joint actions with other routes, and you will see it. You will see it afterwards how. how. And um, also uh, to use the heritage of tourism, the Grand Tour, and the, these European travelers. But also uh, something which is very actual now: this health tourism. And um, maybe you know that uh, now at the European level, at least in the European Union, um, now uh, you are allowed if you are doing a cure in a, in a, in a city uh, in another country, not yours. You you will be Board. So this is now uh, uh, the legal basis. It works. So this health tourism it uh, started to be to be uh, quite popular now in in European Union, and uh, you can see here the European uh, network. So all the cities which are in the association, and we put on this map uh, with a CERTES a route implementation plan Mondorf Les Bains, but also the, the the route which will be between a spa. Mondo, a spa in Belgium, Mondorf Les Bains, uh, Vittel in, fr in France, that I think you know Vittel, and Baden-Baden, um, which is already in the, ne in the European network. Uh, of course, it's uh, very much about, about, landscapes, about landscapes, but also about uh, water. And that's why this morning I, I mentioned this possibility to, to work uh, together maybe for the future in these water technologies and how to use water and how to how to preserve water and the, resources, the nat natural resources in Europe. It is about also uh, very, very well known um, um, spa uh, cities in, in, in European Union that I will not mention here. Um, I will not stop on this resolution because Penelope Denis will present it this afternoon. This is the, the regulatory, the cri uh, eligibility criteria for the Euro Council of Europe uh, resolution. So she will uh, present it this afternoon. Uh, the the key keywords of this of this uh, route, uh, of course, it's health, but for uh, f for for the, for the, for the cures and wellness, uh, for the public health, uh, for scientific and medical res me medical research also. Um, innovation and of course the, the fi philosophy of the places you will see afterwards how the the, the network it works with these topics um, 
of course, the heritage, it is ma material, it is architecture, buildings a lot, which is a very um, specific uh, kind of ar architecture in the, in the spa cities, um, building as for and furniture also. Uh, immaterial ones, skills and traditions uh, on the cures, and of course, geology, hydrology, landscape, and environment, all this is linked to, to the topic. And uh, of course, on the medical uh, level, material and procedures. But in these cities, uh, maybe, you know, uh, uh, some of them, uh, they have a lot of festivals also, may, uh, many cultural events, uh, film festivals, music festivals, and exhibitions. And um, on the tourist basis, uh, it is uh, the heritage of tourism, the grand tour, and the travel literature. A lot of uh, authors, a lot of um, writers, they, they travel a lot, and they, they wrote what they, 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 they have seen. So we have a lot of documentation on, this, uh, on this, uh, these cities and these places or these sites. Um, of, of course, everything which is linked with soft treatments, with slow tourism and slow food, because it's really linked. You have some examples of this typical architecture in, uh, in uh, thermal cities um, in Europe. Uh, they already uh, started to, to create routes, uh, to present the routes of architecture in, in, in thermal, historical thermal towns. Um, you have here some examples of this, this kind of architecture, uh, which is uh, uh, very nice. And um, the idea of the um, historical thermal town uh, association is to take, uh, I mean, at, la at latest 19th century architecture. So it has to be uh, with, a, with a historical background and, um, and to, to, to enter in the, in the, in the association. Um, some of the cities, they are organizing uh, festivals like you can see here in Carlo Vivari, the film festival, which is very well known now all around Europe and also internationally. Or like um, you can see uh, uh, also Franco Foli, which is in Spa, which is, uh, well, this is the proof that uh, this uh, Spa cities is not only for old people or people that are looking for health and going there and uh, staying there, but this, this Franco Foli is very well known in the greater region, but I think also in Europe now. So, um, and attract a lot, a lot of youngsters and uh, a lot of artists and is a very good uh, event. And they, they have the same, the same um, I, I would say, um, interest in mondorf les -Bains to, to develop this, uh, this uh, part of, uh, they already have festivals and music festivals and the casino, but uh, they want to, to develop maybe a, a common pass uh, card with Spa and Vitel on this topic. Um, a lot of uh, features, European features, uh, um, uh, went in these places. So we can link it also, I don't know, with Cécile Imperatrice or uh, with, uh, with writers or um, other, other or, or with, with uh, famous journalists or um, with, um, with comics, which uh, the, the, the place where the comics uh, were written or the, the, it, it happens, it is in these um, spa uh, cities uh, and a lot also in the greater region. And um, this is a, a, another example of uh, spa, Franco Foli. Uh, this is the, the organizer, uh, Charles Gardier. He wanted to come today, but he, was, he, he couldn't. So, uh, but he's very interested to, to, to cooperate with mondorf les -Bains and Vitel to, to develop uh, uh, common products. Of course, we can use the landscape, because the landscape of uh, spa cities is always very interesting. It is a mountain it's around the forest and whatever. So uh, you have the landscape. It's something really, really important for the, for the for for this, uh, this route. Um, I told you that we, we wanted to, to link uh, routes with uh, other routes with the, the Thermal Towns uh, route, uh, like the pilgrimage ways, um, like uh, other routes, um, like um, uh, Transromanica, maybe, or um, so this is the Rom Roman route um, um, going through Europe, which is also um, certified by the Council of Europe. And um, we will uh, focus, of course, in Luxembourg and the greater region, because at the European level, it uh, starts to work uh, quite, quite well. And um, 
Well, I will uh, finish uh, to say, uh, il est temps de repartir en voyage, it's time to go <laughs> for, uh, for a walk. Maybe not the students, because they are, they are tired, but uh, um, now they, they have really to, to relax, and maybe in this, in this uh, spa cities, they, they already visit uh, Mondorf, so they like it very much. They will tell about it. And um, well, with CERTES, it's the first time that we can put uh, this thermal route, uh, the regional level, uh, between Spa, Mondorf, and uh, Vitel, uh, and to, to give a, a visibility to, to the route. I just want to finish and to say that the, the route implementation plan for Luxembourg and the greater region, it was. Um, uh, quite complex, so it is prepared in many parts by, by many, many people uh, on the touristical field, on the governance and policies, um, on this implementation of the route, uh, but also we um, took CERTES as an opportunity to um, assess all the resources we have in Luxembourg and the possibility to develop it uh, on the transborder level with the greater region. And Antoinette Reuter is here. I will give her the floor for five, ten minutes to explain, five minutes, okay, <laughs> to, to explain uh, a little bit her, her work, um, which uh, it was this assessment part. And after I will show you the film of the movie of, the, of Luxembourg. So Antoinette, you have the floor. So I, the same way as Antorina, I was not to, so, supposed to be here <laughs> or to, to speak to you, and uh, so I have no uh, PowerPoint and no film to offer to you. Um, I tried to make a um, report uh, on the um, actual existing uh, um, routes uh, going through Luxembourg, a critical report in some way because uh, what I noticed is we have the institute uh, in Luxembourg and still on the uh, grassroots level, we do not have uh, very much uh, itinerary. So lots of occasions uh, were lost in my opinion, but uh, I think the moment is not to, uh, to regret or to discuss uh, responsibi uh, responsibilities, <coughs> but to step forward and to uh, look what can be done. And uh, I think the, uh, the thermal route is a very good uh, opportunity and there is even uh, um, some impetus to link it with uh, other existing uh, routes. So uh, a good uh, idea could be, but this is not discussed with the stakeholder, it's my suggestion. Uh, a good point could be to uh, link it, for instance, to the um, uh, route of Jewish heritage because uh, Mondorf Libin is the, the only place in Luxembourg where uh, an old uh, synagogue uh, survived the uh, Nazi period. And uh, the thermalism in uh, Mondorf is also uh, much linked to the, um, to the European uh, history of uh, Jewish thermalism since uh, many uh, thermal cities in Germany, in Austria, and even Anglo-Saxon one uh, excluded uh, Jewish people at one moment, starting uh, at the end of the 19th century. And so uh, many of these people came to Mondorf where um, there were uh, also uh, uh, hotels offering uh, kosher food, for instance. And uh, I think it could, could be an interesting um, uh, implementation of the um, Jewish heritage route, since this route uh, has uh, one showcase in the year. It's the Days of Cultural Heritage, but no permanent showcase. And perhaps the, an exhibition in the, um, in the synagogue of uh, Mondorf could be an opening to the Jewish heritage in the greater region, because there are lots uh, of interesting things in Trier, the old uh, ghetto in Wittlich, the synagogue, and uh, uh, much other places, uh, cemeteries in Arlon, where you could uh, go uh, for, for visits. Then I think there is a second uh, itinerary which should to be implemented in Luxembourg. It's um, about uh, industrial heritage. 
uh, this house of Luxembourg was very much linked to uh, the iron industry, and uh, the, this uh, industry largely has gone now. And when all these, uh, the, the link between all these cities in the south of the country was this industrial uh, uh, work, and uh, when it was gone, the, 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 the region lost somehow uh, the identity and was looking for identity, mourning the, the past. But now there is a, no, a new uh, momentum. Uh, the actors uh, are joining together. There is a new um, uh, tourist board for the south of the region. And uh, there is a foundation, Fondation Bassin Minier, who is uh, trying to promote uh, industrial heritage in an uh, um, a way to, to include also new developments. Uh, so last year we had the big festival, the first one, Festival of Heritage and Innovation, and uh, this worked out very well. Um, the Fondation Bassin Minier already produced uh, tourist brochures together with this uh, Red Rock um, uh, board, uh, and uh, for instance, in these uh, tourist brochures, there, there, there is also a promotion of local products uh, and so on. And uh, there are also um, links with, the, with France, since uh, we adopted in some way, um, I say we adopted because I'm a member of the foundation, we adopted uh, in some way the uh, Vallée de la Fange in France. And uh, we gave them an entry, for instance, in the actual tourist brochures. So um, I think the, there is really the, mo the, the moment is really now to try to, to set up this route. The question is um, to convince the, 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 the actors of the plus of the route. What, what, what will the, the route add to their uh, ongoing activities? And um, yes, thank you. Thank you very much, Antoinette. Also, to remind me, yes, about the, the Jewish heritage route because it is uh, it started with Luxembourg also and is a certified route of, by the Council of Europe. But I wanted also to in underline uh, your role in the uh, migration heritage route, which is a very important one for Luxembourg and for the greater region. I just want to remind to who know who didn't know really the well the Luxembourg, no, stop, stop, stop. Luxembourg that uh, that in Lux that in Luxembourg uh, we have more than 100 uh, nationalities living and working and uh, these people, uh, you know, they are maybe, they are all together, but uh, well, they are maybe, um, they, they adopted Luxembourg like their home, so uh, we have to do a lot by the cultural roots also to, to, to yeah, to present this identity of Luxembourg and of the greater region. And uh, I agree with you, the, 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 the core of, of uh, Luxembourg and the greater region, it was, it was the industrial heritage and mining. Uh, and this is very strong in, in this, in this uh, part of Europe. And it's not already known. Um, I think a lot of people, they don't know that Schengen is in Luxembourg, but I tell you, Schengen is in Luxembourg, so I think for European Union, Schengen, it was a good, a, a big achievement also, this circulation and breaking, breaking the, the, the uh, well, the borders uh, in a way. So I think we have a lot to do also with migration heritage, with industrial heritage, with Jewish heritage. We have a lot of uh, material to, to link to this uh, thermal route. So um, it was only a, a start. So we have a lot to do. Thank you very much for your, for your um, speech. And I will put now the movie of the thermal route. Thank you.
invite now Finland, uh, Susanna, to present their root implementation plan. It's also a joining route uh, to a, a European one uh, about St. Olaf route, which is also certified by the, Euro by the Council of Europe. So, uh, Susanna, you have the floor. Okay, good afternoon everybody and regards from Finland, where we already have a little bit of snow, so it's not good for us, probably. Um, so in our route implementation plan, really we are talking about joining an existing route, uh, St. Ola Ways, which runs at the moment in Norway, Sweden and Denmark. Um, as most of you might know that we don't have any official route in Finland, official European certified cultural route in Finland. So that was a starting point for us in this project as well. Uh, during the project we have discussed with uh, many cooperators and stakeholders and um, um, Actually, during the mid-seminar, we found out that there has been a lot of activities already around St. Olaf Ways in Finland as well. So individuals and organizations have uh, contacted a Norwegian organization, and also they have been very active in Finland to collect inf information. So our ro role in this process has been like a facilitator so we have tried to collect people together and uh, discuss uh, around stakeholder tables and mid-seminar and final conference, for example. We have tried to promote the idea, promote the idea in different parts of Finland and uh, in different organizations like the uh, Ministry of Education and Culture and um, a national tourism organization as well. Um, we have also gathered information about what have, have already been done around the theme and also uh, background information about St. Olaf. Or oh, actually, it has been gathered by experts, but we have kind, kind of wrote it down in our RIP document, especially. So a lot of networking and cooperation has been done in, in Finland, but also in Nordic countries, or mainly with Norway. So we have cooperated with the National Pilgrimage Center in Norway in Trondheim. And especially there, Berit Lonke has been very helpful for us, for example, in tutoring sessions. Also Hans Morten Lövröd, the current director. So as I mentioned in the beginning, there is no official European uh, cultural route in Finland. Um, and then, as I mentioned, we found out that there has been activities already around the topic. And we thought that, okay, that might be a good possibility for Finland to start to have our cultural heritage also on the cultural um, uh, route map in the future. So the Sand Olaf Ways, at the moment, it runs in Norway, uh, Sweden and Denmark and it consists around, consists around 5,000 kilometers um, of, of ways or routes already. Uh, we have a common history in Nordic countries and also history related to St. Olaf cult, cult, but still we are quite different countries. So Norway have uh, special features, natural features and cultural features, same with Sweden, and we hope that Finland could bring also valuable addition to this network with its own cultural heritage and uh, landscape, for example. The pilgrimage itself, it's, it is not very deep in our culture in Finland, since we are a Lutheran country, but uh, we still think that this idea of pilgrimage uh, suits quite well in Finland, and especially our Finnish uh, tourism brand, which focuses on authentic nature-related experiences and well-being. Also, so nature, 
peacefulness and mental wellness are especially important in our tourism. We talk about also kind of new spiritualism, which people might uh, read when they are wondering uh, uh, doing that pilgrimage as well. Responsible tourism, of course, that is an important part in Finland and Finnish tourism. Uh, here you can see the map where the routes are running at the, uh, at the moment. So they are basically ending, all are ending up to Nidaros Cathedral in Trondheim. And soon you will see uh, more maps about uh, new possibilities for the routes or ways. Something about um, St. Olav. I'm not an expert there, I'm rather expert in tourism related matters, but I have learned a lot during this last year especially. So St. Olaf was originally known as Olaf Haraldsson. Uh, he was a young but rough Viking, as we have learned, but then he pe became a Christian king of Norway in 2016. Um, after a very interesting and compli complicated life and full of stories, he died in 1013 in a battlefield. And after his death, he was um, declared a saint. And what is interesting in Saint Olaf is that he was the first saint in Nordic countries. And together with that, the uh, last saint before the churches were divided. So combining Orthodox and Catholic churches as well. That is shortly about uh, St. Olaf. And in Finland, as we found out, St. Olaf has been studied and um, informa information has been collected uh, by many experts, experts in, in uh, theology and history, for example. So we have a lot of material in Finland as well. So in this map you can see the points where you can find churches, monasteries and chapels dedicated to St. Olaf in Nordic countries. So in Norway, Sweden and Denmark, but also quite many in Iceland and in Finland, Great Britain and Northern Europe coastal line and also in Russia. So like in previous slides, um, I indicated that uh, St. Olaf Ways have a strategy or idea to enlarge uh, during the next few years to Finland, Iceland, and probably to Russia as well, because there is a strong connection um, to St. Olaf life as well. Uh, that is the map, especially about Finland. So you can see we are talking about southern Finland, and especially the coastal line, which is the oldest part of Finland, we can say. So these are the churches dedicated to St. Olaf in Finland. And um, based to those churches and also medieval pilgrimage paths ways in Finland, our cooperator and external expertise expert, uh, Aro Söderlund, he has outlined uh, this map, how the routes could be in Finland, could run in Finland, based to these um, churches and the routes. So there is a connection to Sweden and probably connection to Russia as well later. So, about the future. So we have collected information, we have a relevant contents to join St. Olaf Ways in Nordic countries. Uh, we have uh, evidence and we have a route outline already, but a lot to do in practice in future. So, for example, the uh, distances are quite long in Finland, so the basic infrastructure is quite demanding to kind of build up for the routes. And then we have really discussed and thought about uh, organizational issues, um, how the organization should be, what kind of players there should be to make that uh, route uh, sustainable in Finland in future as well. Um, 
the idea has been that we could join the route in 2015, so next year. I don't know if that is a relevant idea, but hopefully in, in during the next two years probably we might be ready to join, but lot to work to do still. So I must say that I have to, we have to thank you, the partnership in CERTES, to, that we have started this project in the first place. So I forgot to mention in the beginning that um, European cultural routes are not so very well known in Finland in the first place. So we have really started from scratch, scratch um, empty table. But now we, ha we have learned a lot about European cultural routes and uh, we could have sp spread it, that information in Finland and raised discussion um, how to bring the Finnish cultural heritage to this map as well. So that has been very, very important for us to start this um, whole, whole project and route implementation plan. Um, since the, we are very beginning in the work, as you can uh, find out, we have chosen the best practices and government tools from uh, our database, which are related mostly to the first part of the route impl implementation plan. So how to, how to start the theme and the cooperation stakeholders and models especially. That was shortly our presentation about our route, and uh, <laughs> still I want to thank you on behalf of our team for the great cooperation and nice, nice project. I really hope that we will continue that cooperation. Thank you.
Thank you very much, Susanna, and uh, the team, or your team, working on this. I remember that when we started CERTES project, you told me uh, what, is, uh, for, what is cultural tourism, because for us, it is natural tourism. And I said, whoa, that, that's why I think it's very important that we did this glossary at the beginning, because uh, to speak about the same, same thing <laughs> in the same time. So uh, yes, nature is part of the culture tourism for me. And um, by the way, I think the, um, the, um, in Luxembourg, the slogan is, uh, the nature is in, a, in our culture. <laughs> so you see, it's al always linked. But when I visited Finland and I saw all these uh, hundreds of lakes and uh, we start to spoke. Okay, it is a pilgrimage way, but if we, the pilgrims, but the pilgrims will arrive to the lake or, or to the to the sea, how they can go in in in, in, um, in, in, in on, the, on the other side. So we started like this, and it was a lot of uh, discussions, of course. But uh, I'm very happy to see that uh, uh, finally you can join maybe, join maybe Saint Olaf and maybe to to develop other routes. So thank you very much. I just want to, to, to ask you for some patience because we have one more presentation uh, from Austria because they have to leave. They have their own final conference um, these days, tomorrow or after tom tomorrow. So they are a little bit under pressure. And after that, I promise you that we stop to, for lunch <laughs> for one hour and we will continue with the other presentations uh, at three o'clock. I. Um, I really wanted to give the space to each uh, partner to present uh, their, their route implementation plan because it was a, a, a huge work, a lot, a lot of work. So I will give the floor to uh, Veronika Hornung, who will present uh, the um, Salzburg um, route implementation plan. Veronika, you have the floor, please. So don't worry, we are in three, but we will really promise you to make it short. Um, we had a very special role in this project from the very beginning. Uh, we are not operators of a dedicated route. Instead, we are a research organization, Salzburg Research. We are experts um, in the field of information and communication technologies and we apply these expertise in different fields. One important field in the current respect is the tourism industry. So we are really experts in e-tourism, the application of inform information and communication technology in the whole leisure and travel industry. And we also have quite some expertise in the field of e-culture. So again, the application of these technologies in this sector. You can find more information about other projects uh, like this, innovations in destinations. You can find the folders outside uh, uh, on the table. That's an innovation potential analysis we are doing on behalf of local uh, regions. Then another uh, interesting hint, I guess, would be uh, the handbook on creative cultural heritage. You can download it uh, from that link. I think that should be of benefit for your work. But Speeding up a little bit, um, we are not linked to only one single route, although in the end we took uh, our uh, concept to the Salzalpensteig, but we also prepared a lot of input also from other routes. Uh, one example here would be uh, the Mozart um, uh, ways, so that's the tours, the trips, the travels uh, Wolfgang Amadeus Mozart did at his lifetime across Europe. Um, we, for example, uh, brought the statutes of, of, of uh, the Mozart base as best practice example uh, into uh, the CERTES project. But I really promised you to make it quick, and therefore I'm already handing over to Veronica. Okay. Thank you, Marcus. Uh, what you may have gathered from Marcus' uh, introduction is that we have in Austria a lot of experience in cultural tourism that we also uh, have uh, a lot of, uh, we are hosting a lot of cultural routes. R quite recently, the Via Habsburg has been certified by the Institute. However, because uh, when we did the research for the CERTIS database, we realized that the cultural routes, the recent one, uh, the, the 
especially the older ones, are not so open in, uh, or are very reluctant in using ICTs and new media for valorizing their cultural heritage assets, make them open, public, available, make them accessible, and reach a young audience. And that's why our RIP theme is, we look deeper into this question, and our RIP theme is conveying European culture 2.0, how to design and mediate the cultural heritage assets along a cultural route with mobile technologies and social media. So this is our core competence actually. And we try to, um, we have research and we try to uh, apply that uh, research results and our insights and hypotheses in a regional showcase. Um, uh, which one was this one? What are the needs of a cultural tourist today? They are very, they are very complex needs actually. You have historical knowledge you want to mediate. Uh, you don't just want to present your objects and architectures, but you want to mediate that in a timeline dimension. You want to mediate them in a spatial dimension. So that point itself makes it very compl complicated for a cultural institution to fulfill, fulfill these needs. The other needs for a cultural tourist, of course, is just the normal needs of a tourist. You need booking information, you need touristical infrastructure, you need information on public openings, and so on. And the third one, which has become very much more important in the recent tourism trends is all what information you, uh, and knowledge you want to mediate has to be of personal relevance to the visitor of your routes. It has to entertain them somehow. And you, you want that somebody else also knows about your route and your experience on the route. You need social sharing of this experience. And to make it more complicated with the cultural routes is, you know, not only have one POE point of interest, you have many points of interest and you have many destination points. And that makes it also complicated for an operator, I think, uh, to somehow uh, have a, a good solution for that. Uh, we have tried to, uh, to um, apply our research uh, hypothesis and our concept with a regional showcase, which is the Salz Alpensteig, and uh, the oh no, it's also an Alpine Salt Trail in English, of course. And we unite six. It's actually six regions for our our evaluation sheet now. It's six interreg partner regions. They link their UNESCO World, uh, World Cultural and Natural Heritage to one route. They have linked that. They are going to open that in next March. This uh, route, which is on, based on the UNESCO Cultural Heritage on Salt Mining, Salt Production, and the tradition on how to do the salt mining. But they have re-established, and that's a very innovative aspect, I think, for a route to a new hiking trail. So they combine the demands of uh, the cultural tourists, not only, like we also saw in the videos, you're going to bike and you have sort of the cultural sites, and that's what they are trying to do. And we have developed for them the concept and the prototype application uh, for their route, and we'd prepare uh, our RIP to, to uh, develop the recommendation how to implement that for the whole route, or maybe for another one. And why is that a, a big challenge? I don't know. Okay, before we go to the challenges, we explain you how the salt route in uh, Bavaria, and because we're linking Bavaria and, and Salzburg, is of importance, of cultural importance. Yeah, well, um, the new established Alpine salt trail um, is embedded in and connected with uh, lots of old European salt routes. For example, one is going from, um, as you can uh, via Salaria, is going from Lüneberg up to, um, to the harbors and where the um, ships uh, brought the salt to the Baltic areas and also down uh, to um, Prague to Salzburg to Rome and down to Palermo. And then the other one via Salina, for example, is going from France to Switzerland. And, and also there is um, the very important uh, Atlantic route of traditional salt on the, on the left side, left hand side, uh, which is of course um, gained uh, from the sea, uh, salt sea, not mountain. Uh, mountain salt, so salt sea, sea salt. And uh, there are also some other old trails. Um, they're going mostly by, by waterways. They're, for example, going along here up to Bavaria and from Bavaria up to Bohemia or over waterways over Salza, the Traun, the Uni, the Danube River. Yeah, also 
that's where it is um, connected with their old salt routes. And that's why we thought that the alpine salt route would be fit in this concept. Um, Yeah, the trail is divided into 18 stages um, and stretches over 230 kilometers. And from Preen in Bavaria, that's up here at the Preen Kingau, um, cross the borders in, in Hallein, Bad Reichenhall Hallein, in, um, to Austria and goes to, to Hallstatt in Austria. And the Alpensart trade follows three different approaches, and each point of interest was carefully chosen and assigned to one of the three approaches. Uh, the approaches of the, the history heritage, for example, of Alpine salt mining, the processing, the trading from prehistoric times until today. Um, along the trail, the visitors, for example, I cannot show the pictures here. Um, um, the, along the trail, the visitor can see, for example, the old and the new production sites of the salt mines, um, old pipelines, salt pipelines, but also edits, pump station, and pipelines along the trail. Um, they see old salt mines, but also salt mines uh, for, which can be visited by, by visitors today. Um, then the culture is another approach. Uh, the culture of the salt miners, of their families, their traditions, their clothes, uh, their habits. For example, there we have the Dürnberger Schwerthans. I wanted to show this, but I, I don't know how to. Mm. We have it here. It's an old sword, sword dance for just a minute. Yeah, thank you very much. It's an old uh, sword dance, which is which is over 500 years old and was made by the by the um, miners, and it's also. UNESCO Heritage. And this uh, sword dance attracts many, many visitors and tourists um, yeah, each year. Just to get an impression, I don't want to show you everything, but... Also, one another approach is nature and the rare species along the salt uh, trail. For example, salt marshlands, <coughs> peat to use for the salt pans who got dicked in the in the moor and peat areas. And for example, Kandelunfilzen, but I don't show you that now because it's not enough time. Um, and the nice thing to say is the connection between the two countries, between Germany and Austria and the very old existing uh, treaties between the two countries and which are existing uh, until today. This is here. And the cross border. Yeah. Um, So we've really been in between in that project, in between the tourism stakeholders, the culture people, and we made quite some efforts in, in translating between these groups. Um, if you want to have a useful information system, of course, there are different demands uh, towards that system from the different stakeholder groups. Culture people tend to want to have 
every detail, every small information inside such a system from the tourism marketer's perspective, that's clearly much too much information, uh, uh, pure information overload for tourists. So uh, the reality what is we need to have something that's really usable for the user. We already had that in, in, in previous presentations. And so that useful form of content from a user perspective, from a traveler perspective, that's the real uh, goal of that project. And the other thing is we must have that content manageable. Tourism stakeholders uh, are uh, strongly reluctant to produce any new form of content platform where they also must put additional efforts in the maintenance of that uh, contents. They really appreciate uh, contents for multiple use on the mobile website, uh, on the mobile information system for smartphones or for tablet computers. Um, and that's what we tried to realize in our project in a field trial. It's just the prototype. It's, it's not the, the full rollout version of it. Um, it also strongly focuses on, on, on the culture part of it. We did not do uh, anything about navigation in uh, the route and along the route. That was another part uh, that's prepared and provided by the operators of uh, uh, the Alpine Salt Trail themselves in cooperation with uh, a publishing house focusing on, on hiking uh, maps. So uh, the combination and, and, and the workflow between these different kinds of information, that's the real uh, challenge here. And uh, yeah, we'll show you some examples how we tried to realize that. Because it's a little bit difficult to show an app uh, in a, to an audience, but here it is, here it is. And if you want to try in the, in the break, you can do that. So this is the, f I don't know if you can see or you can show it through. This is the front page and then you can see how it works. So we have three modules which should correspond and support the visitor, model information, model activity, and module community. And then there we have a, a concept for an incentive uh, to motivate the people to, or the visitors to go from one section of the route to the next section or to another section. But a route has these different sections, so somehow we have the idea that the route uh, network is visited in the, in the lifetime maybe, or tourists tend to go come back to uh, interesting sites to come back. Um, the, the model information looks a little bit like a traditional old-fashioned one. Um, of course, we have uh, the, the same thing like you would always find in a tourism uh, app now. You have many POEs, point of interest, with uh, information about the point of interest itself, very short. You got this touristic information uh, uh, where they can have their accommodation, blah, blah, blah. But for us, what is more important is that the cultural content uh, is not restricted to only objects, but is also very focusing on intangible heritage, traditions, and uh, what you do and what has been of relevance today. For example, we have six partner regions and we have counted, I mean six is a minimum a number of dialects only between those two main uh, states, Bavaria and, and uh, Salzburg, well states, state, county state, and we have six regions and we have minimum six dialects and we are trying in our app then for each section to get uh, a sort of testing of uh, dialect. We have persons speaking the dialect and then you can compare at the sections which dialect is still alive. And uh, uh, so you really have something you can to uh, listen to you with all your senses and yet you can uh, uh, share also at home uh, what, is, what is your saying of this sentence and so whatever. So those of you who know German, this is the, the sentence, or the, we have different sentences, wo kein Salz im Hause ist, der Mangel des am besten Gewürz. If you have no salt at home, you're missing a lot of herbs. And we have that now in five or five dialects. But we are uh, also focusing on other things, like uh, like Diana said, the Dürmberg Schwertanz and the uh, music uh, the miners made. It's not, it's 500 years old, but it's still alive. This is a picture and we have music uh, inserts of the, uh, now of the current uh, miners big band, which are only young people, 16, 17, 18 years old. And they play, um, play rather classical traditional things, but they also play jazz things, they play uh, salt related uh, music. And we have a CD-ROM of them, it's called Xeuzen. Maybe you understand. Xeuzen means uh, how to use your salt. 
And so you get uh, on, it's on the uh, some things are working, some things are not working because of the internet. So don't don't be uh, surprised. So we have uh, we have included some things which are of relevance to young people, not only to young people, but also to people of today. This is again the folk dance. Actually, this is a really big festival in August every second year. It's only every second year now. And we have recipes of all traditions, of course. Uh, this is a. Dumpling, yeah, dumpling was the word, yeah. Okay. But these recipe is still alive because we have a colleague, it's called Gosau Nocken in German. Gosau is the region and it's Nocken Dumpling. And she said, oh, my grandma is doing that. I can give you the recipe. So we just included that and we will may find other things like that. So this is just one example that you have to do somehow to think about the cultural heritage assets also in its relevance of today. The other thing is, of course, we included digital storytelling as a funny example. Uh, you see here all these prime, uh, prime pipelines, pipelines, where the liquid salt uh, has to go through on the mountains because you have, we have the mountains. You have it has been gone through the regions. And the guy here on the left side, he he is called Anton Bora, and he is the postman of the 18th century because he was actually in charge of supervising these pipelines, but because not uh, he I don't know somehow. The, uh, of course, the infrastructure was not uh, at the, uh, like we have emails or so. So he took the post from one station to the other station. And there is uh, a lot of stores, they still have been doing that until the last 30 years, I think. They stopped doing it after the Second World War. But because he, he could tell his story, he's now nine, well, he's died, he's died. I uh, mean, he's dead, <laughs> he's dead, but... Uh, the interview was done, so they stopped it after the Second World War, but we still have uh, oral history and uh, people who can, can tell how they did that. And um, you have something to hear. And the module activity, you have that also on your seat, or you have that maybe seen. Well, in my generation, we had to send postcards home, but today, people, it's really a postcard, you can use that for yourself. But my kids, uh, they always, well, they struggle with addresses because if I say, do you have an address? They call me, oh, what's your email address? So they don't even know that there is an address existing somehow. What we do is we included things that are, can be done both. You have both your haptic thing and you have it digital. So on the app, you can either send a digital postcard here, either you send your own pictures, that's easy, but you should include historical postcards and or we produce this one. This example here is um, a way of, it's a photograph done uh, with a, sli uh, a time slider that you see it on this side, it's old, on this side is how it's done today. Looks, I think we have it here. This is the Folk Museum from Breen. This is in Kimgau, the region Kimgau. On the left hand side, you see when it's, it was done in the beginning, it's an old photograph, and this is a new one. And in the app, you can slide from one side to the other because this movement is the movement of the young generation. We call it uh, wiping, it's wiping. They wipe, and you should include things that young people do now. So, and then the third thing here as well, this is again a pump, prime pump station an old format and a new format, and it looks like you can slide from one side to the other. Um, in order to, is this? Yeah. In order to motivate guests to move from one section to the other, in our case, it's uh, important because we have a 250 kilometers hiking trail. And the hiking trail has low areas and very steep areas. And the idea is that you motivate them to go all the 18 sections. And you can do this uh, with a rather easy way, with a digital tour book, that you will include it all the sections. And you can, with GPS, when you are there, you get a GPS stamp in your digital route book. And the yellow 
thing here, the yellow is a gold coin, it shows up that you have done that. So how much did I reach? This is this gamification thing. Or you can also say in the next level, I have reached one section, I go to the next level. You have, if you go to the next section, you get another gold coin. You get in the virtual thing a virtual gold kind, coin and we are cooperating and we are just also uh, trying to implement that with the tourism agencies that in the very end when you have done all your sections or maybe three sections or four sections, we are just discussing how many sections a visitor really has to do. Uh, you get your gold section, uh, your gold coin at the tourism agency. So you include the tourism offices somehow, or also the cultural institution, like the salt, old salt works. They do that, and they are trying to promote that as well. But somehow you have to think about incentives that the people are motivated to go from one point to the other. Um, so this is the, how it works. It's salt spending. It means salt coin. You choose it. I don't know if you see it in one POE, and if you have done your six POEs, I think we have done now six, and then you get all your your lists, and then you get a rating and do it. And when you are very successful, you can share, of course, these rates with the community. The Salz Alpensteig already had a Facebook community page. They are trying to enlarge that. So you can uh, include also challenges. You can include um, challenges also who has done the nicest picture on the road. This, uh, we included um, cultural related uh, postcards, but you can also share, of course, your own pictures. This is a, it's one of the oldest uh, postcards actually, which is existing from this. It's it, uh, 110 years old or so, um, from Breen. And this is also one. You can share that, of course, with all social media sites. So uh, if you want to try and test it, you can do it here. We have prepared now only three sections because all 18 sections of the Salzalpensteig is quite a lot of work. And we have started a little bit later with this uh, cooperation than it was expected. But uh, we are going to present that tomorrow on our final conference, which is included in the main e-tourism conference. And uh, I think this is a good opportunity. They also present their project, so we are really cooperating with this interact project. And uh, when we have finalized all the conceptual things, we might think also of transferring this concept to another route, like in the Alpine Salt route with the same uh, content or related content, but you can use it for any sort of route I, you really want to look. So uh, if you want to test, test it and share the experience with us. One second, one second. Before, okay. Before, about uh, only one word uh, before we close the session. We wanted to do it after all the other sessions. Um, yeah, uh, EU project has a start and has an end. It's also like a long journey or a, it's a project route, so to say. And we want to thank you, Serena, on behalf of the whole uh, project group and uh, uh, you and the, also the institute. I mean, Penelope is not here now, but maybe we can see her in the afternoon for going with this on this journey with us on two and a half years or three years. And we have chosen sunflowers because we think it's always good to have your smile <laughs> in our meetings and you need more uh, sun to, for all the other projects and the roots. And many thanks for the cooperation and enabling us for it. Thank you.